Hi there. Well, I've been thinking about my next project and I quite fancy uh, trying to build a V-twin. And uh, what I had in mind was the um, Jury Howell V-twin. And I got the plans, serial number 599. And uh, it looks li like a really, really well engineered engine. Um, but quite challenging. Well, very challenging. <laughs> and... Uh, Alan Sills suggested um, trying to have a go at making a hoglet, which is also a V-twin. And uh, it, it is a simpler machine, um, but it's not intended really to drive anything. Um, I think it says somewhere in the instructions that it's um, sort of meant to be sort of like a concept type engine. Um, if I can find where it says that. Yeah, more of a, um, intended as a demonstration model for a show and tell um, purposes primarily. And uh, it does look like an interesting engine. So I think what I'm gonna do is, for my next project, I'm gonna have a go at the Hoglet. And if that turns out well, uh, I'll have learnt a lot. And then I'll have a go at the Jerry Howell V-Twin. Uh, but anyway, in this video I'm going to uh, complete the odds and ends engine. Okay, so uh, since my last video showing the test run um, I've made a few changes. Uh, well, first of all I've painted it and uh, made a bit of a stand, uh, got a box for the electronics and on the test run I wasn't overly happy with the points and I wasn't 100% um, comfortable that they were working exactly right. Um, so what I've decided to do is to convert it to electronic ignition and do away the, with the coil as well because I, I wasn't too convinced that that was working well. So uh, I've put a whole sensor on there um, using a bracket from the farm boy and uh, I've then made this uh, piece out of brass, well two pieces of brass and when, well there's, a, there's a, a little magnet in there so when the magnet passes the hall sensor it'll generate a spark and uh, it'll generate a, a spark on the uh, top of each stroke which isn't ideal but that's how the points would have worked anyway in an ideal situation I should have put it on the cam gear but it's too busy around that area um, but, I, but I think we'll be okay with that. What I've also done is um, I've put uh, in a, a long reach rim fire plug because the thickness of the uh, cylinder wall is, is well quite deep and I wasn't convinced I was getting a good enough spark and I've made um, a fuel tank uh, based around the farm, bo farm boy and uh, I think that'll need to be sort of quite high up, so I need to think about that, what I'm going to do with that. Um, but uh, so good so far. Oh, and the other thing was, um, on my test run, uh, I was having issues with the cast iron piston rings. And Bob suggested to run them in using some graphogen paste. Um, so I put this paste around the piston rings and the piston. And then I ran it in on the uh, lathe. I'll show you a bit of footage in terms of how I did that. Well, it's been running in for about sort of half an hour at 300 RPM. And uh, I've just put some oil in here. I've put the compressor on 20 psi, and you can actually see um, air leakage going past the pistons. Not a massive amount. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of compression. If I, you know, if I try and uh, move the crankshaft, it's well, it's virtually impossible. It's not losing that much pressure. About 18 psi now. 
So I've just got this graphogen paste that uh, Bob suggested using for running in. So I'll give that a try. And the idea is that uh, this graphogen paste will sort of dilute when you add oil. And uh, they use this stuff on Rolls Royces and uh, there was a guy using it on a Lamborghini engine build. So if it's good enough for those, it's uh, good enough for this little engine. And uh, I have seen an improved result. So uh, in this video, for the final run, I'm going to uh, hopefully get it to run with the uh, cast iron piston rings. And another thing I found to be a problem was the uh, grub screw here um, on both of the flywheels tends to come loose. So uh, I've put another one in here. Um, I might lock tight these in place at some point use some, using a bit of thread lock. Uh, but anyway, we'll see if that improves things. So these are the nameplates that Olivia made me, which are great. And uh, while the uh, Epoxy resin was dry on those, I decided to make a muffler. Um, which I don't think it makes any difference to the uh, noise actually, but it uh, looks a bit prettier than just a hole in the carb. And uh, I've oiled it all up and we're ready to go, so we'll give it a try. Hey! to about 800 RPM in the flywheels. Yeah, now we have two. Lit loves and ends doesn't coast as long. Well, I must say I'm absolutely over the moon with that little odds and ends engine and uh, she looks great alongside the farm boy. <laughs> um, I think once the cast iron rings have uh, run in a bit better, um, she'll probably uh, sort of cruise along uh, between firing a bit longer. Uh, but I'm, I'm really happy with the result. And uh, Earl's uh, just in the process of his final build 
but he did take, take a little bit of video of his test build, so I'll show you that now. Anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice provided. It really is very much appreciated. And in particular to uh, Olivier in France who uh, made those fantastic nameplates. And I've sent a couple off to Earl and uh, he, he, Earl will be displaying those on his final build as well. And uh, once he's done his final build, um, I'll provide a link uh, to his video on his channel uh, in my description. And also uh, thanks to uh, Simon Burt for uh, providing the spark plug and it, a bit unfortunate they, uh, I mean the spark plug worked great uh, but a bit unfortunate the, the thickness of the cylinder wall is such that it needed a slightly longer reach. Um, also many thanks to Bob Down for suggesting uh, graphogen paste and uh, I think they did a it did a fantastic job running those piston rings in, so I really appreciate that, Bob. And uh, last but not least, Earl Abbott um, in the US. Um, Earl initially provided me with um, the three magazines that featured the Trimble method of making piston rings. Uh, the, the Strictly IC magazines, volume two, number seven, number eight, and number nine. And uh, those can be. Um, ordered from the States, uh, postage is a bit expensive to the UK, uh, but uh, they're still producing copies, um, forget what the website is, but it's easy to find out on the internet. And uh, Oh also, <laughs> also Earl uh, provided me with sort of like a, an idiot step by step guide to making piston rings. <laughs> the Trimble method. It's a bit exhaustive, you know, um, it goes into a lot of detail, uh, but uh, based upon other methods, Earl came, came up with this uh, idiot's guide, which I followed in my um, cast iron ring uh, making video. So if you want an idea how to make cast iron rings, uh, just watch that video. Uh, I can't guarantee that uh, it will work out for you, but it works out for me. And uh, it was fantastic. Um, working with Earl on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, just collaborating uh, over email and uh, exchanging ideas and it really helped uh, keep this uh, little project on track so uh, thanks very much Earl for that and uh, in, the, in the past I've uh, received some uh, suggestions to make um, a universal spring winder and I was very fortunate um, a few weeks back a couple of people um, uh, donated to my PayPal account uh, sort of in thanks to some of the videos I've, I've made that have helped them and so I thought I'd use that money to actually buy a Hemingway's kit for a universal spring winder. Now I know there's different plans out there um, it was just easy for me to buy the kit that's got everything in it uh, drill bits, nuts, bolts wire, um, some plastic, I don't know what that's for, and uh, loads of pieces of metal. Um, I think it costs about 35 quid, but uh, by the time you've sort of gone out and bought the bits and pieces of metal, you're probably not far off 35 quid. So uh, I'm going to have a go at making that in the not too distant future. Not sure if I'll make a video. Um, but. Uh, now what I'm going to do is to have a bit of a break for a, a couple of weeks and uh, I'm going to start planning my hoglet and uh, I need to start thinking about what I need to buy for it. It's got a bill of materials um, so I need to start buying some bits and pieces and uh, like I say hopefully two or three weeks time I might actually start uh, making that. Um, ironically it uses a Viton ring <laughs> or Viton rings uh, but uh, I think what I might do I might you know just modify the plans a little bit maybe make the cylinder um, close to a Viton ring dimension 
um, but actually make cast iron rings and see if that works. If you don't, I'll go back to my tongue. So uh, I hope you like the video and uh, I hope to see you later.